Hi, I'm Dixon Tsai, and this is the first installment of Data Structures in 5 Minutes. Today I'm going to talk about hash tables, which are a very simple yet very effective data structure and that's used a lot. And the main advantages of hash tables over arrays and linked lists are the following. First, find, insert, and remove the three main operations of hash tables take on average constant time, which is much better than what linked lists have, which is linear time. But the advantage of hash tables over arrays is that the keys can be anything. And all you need is about um, n buckets, which is the number of items that you're going to be storing. So you can see that hash tables have an advantage over both of them. The main challenge is to find a way such that we can achieve this second advantage over arrays. So first, suppose that you are trying to hash words from the English language into a hash table. Of course, you can't create two million buckets just to fit every single word of the English language, so you're going to have to compress the word somehow. Here's the compression function. The compression function is a function that takes in an object and maps it to a number in the range of 0 to big N minus 1, where big N is the number of buckets, such that you can store that object into your hash table. And this compression function works best if it is completely random. So hash codes are hard to write, but the ideal one is where all the objects get mapped to a random number and that can be stored later. The way the compression function assigns an object to a number depends on what objects you're dealing with. So for instance, some of the words can be categorized using the ASCII scheme, for instance. Now, looking at the hash table, you can see that because the items are hashed randomly, there's a chance for some to be colliding, and that's what you see here. So for instance, you have these two that got hashed to the same bucket, and this is called chaining. So you can use any data structure to represent this chaining. So for instance, if you have numerical keys, singly linked lists might be a bit slower. You can perhaps implement another tree. But for the most part, singly linked lists are, very, are a logical choice. So that takes care of chaining. And if your compression function is random enough, the length of these linked lists should not be very large. And so you'll achieve constant time on average. Now let's talk about the load factor which is the ratio of little n, as you can recall, is the, um, is the number of entries to be stored over big N, the number of buckets. You want to maintain this invariant here, where your hash table is not much longer than the number of items you want to store. And so you, have, you want it to be between 1 quarter and 3 quarters. And if your load factor exceeds that, of course, you should double the size. And after doubling the size, you'll have a new compression function that maps to double the size. So from 0 to 2n minus 2, perhaps. 2n minus 1, sorry. 2n minus 1. And so you'll have to rehash every item. To conclude, we'll talk about what makes a good compression function. So the obvious choice is to use hash code mod n, where hash code is a random address that Java assigns to each object, and n a prime number of buckets. This will create a nice random spread of 0 to n minus 1. An even better compression function is to use one where you have two constants, uh, two big prime numbers, p and n, that you mod, and a few other constants that you use over here. This will give you an even better spread. And finally, if you're asked to analyze for a good hash code, one thing to look for, of course, is the good spread. You don't want the compression function to naturally map a few objects to two or three buckets. You want a good spread. And the second is to distinguish between each and every object. So if you're mapping words from the English language, you want to avoid anagrams having the same hash code. Finally, order matters. So if you have a game board, you don't want your first square and your last square to have the same hash code or have symmetry mess it up. You need to consider the order. Finally, to recap, hash tables have a very good advantage of having a key being any object, not just integer indices for arrays, and a value. So if you see a key value pair and a key that can be any object, hash tables might be your best choice.
Thank you for listening.